next little project I thought I would share with y'all. I've got this old uh, four drawer chest here. Now in the South, we call this Chester drawers. And that's probably what you're gonna hear me refer to it now. And of course I've picked one of the hottest times to start this project. So I'm not going to um, do a whole lot to the prep work of this piece. I am going to take and clean it very good and, or as much as possible. It's pretty nasty. It was in a barn and after that it was in a garage and it was in a corner and I think I've got most of the cobwebs off of it, but it's still pretty nasty. The drawers and hinges are all are in good condition though, so it's too good to throw away, that's for sure. But it's got a little bit of odor to it, so I'll have to do something about that. We got it on wheels, so it should be easy for me to work with here. And as you can see, it's a pretty solid piece. And as far as prep does, I'm gonna start with just sanding this top only. And I'll come back after I have cleaned it and after I have sanded the top and we'll go from there. to make sure I got all this gooky stuff off because I definitely didn't want to be painting on over that. So the drawers actually look better than what they thought. I, I had contemplated maybe just leaving it like it is now and just changing the knobs, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to get these out and I'm going to number the back of each drawer here with a pencil so that I make sure they go in the right spot. Believe it or not, they are not the exact same size. So it's always a good idea to number these old doors like this. So that'll be the first thing I do. I took the knobs off. I gave them a little bath and some Dawn and some Goo Gone. They're in really good shape. I just got them on this styrofoam here and what I'm gonna do is just simply spray paint them. This is some metallic matte paint primer color in Venetian bronze. I wanted it to look like an antique bronze color. So I'm just gonna spray paint those and let them sit out to dry. I'm gonna stain the top, undecided on my color yet. This is a bug. And I'm gonna whitewash this tonight. So this is what I'm starting with. Valspar Glaze Lime Wash. And I'm just gonna take a little chippy brush here and just kind of wash it. I do have a sponge that I might go back and just kind of um, even it out with. Kind of like giving it a bath in this lime wash, and that's it. That's all I'm gonna do tonight, so.
Okay, y'all. Sorry about that, but my camera um, is about to die on me. So with the lime wash glaze, basically what I've been doing, and I'll try to talk loud because I got do have the fan on behind me. If you'll notice, I started off opposite of the grain. And then I went back and did it with the grain. And that's because I'm trying to get a crisscross um, distressed look to it. And then I went back with the damp sponge and just kind of blended everything. So this is what it looks like. And I've done the other side. The other side looks a little bit different. It took it a little bit different, but still pretty much the same. And now I'm gonna go back. Let's see if I can get this turned around here without it rolling off my wheels. It's about to roll off. And I'm just going to do these front pieces right here the same way. I'm not going to do the drawer tops because I do have something else planned for them. So I'm just going to do these um, little pieces right here in the front of the piece. And I'm going to let this dry overnight and then we'll um, come back tomorrow night and see how that looks. See, I'm starting with the opposite of the grain. And it, I'm not going for a smooth finish. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm just putting it in there. Kind of sloppy, if you will, because this piece, as you know, was very scratched up, already distressed, and I'm just going with what I got. So, just a way to quickly make over this piece without putting too much work into it. But I do have something special planned for the drawer, so I hope that works out for me. Kind of got an experiment going on there. Could just go ahead and do it like this. I'm not going to bother about doing the inside here. We'll leave that original. It's cleaned out good. It doesn't smell bad anymore, thank goodness. It'll be ready. I probably will line the drawers with something, though. And this stuff dries fairly quick. So I did one side completely. Then I did the other side. And then I'm going back and doing a section at a time. See, I'm just kind of blending that in. And I can already tell I'm gonna want some more white there. You can always go back and add to. It's easier to add to than it is to take away. All right. Just like that. Easier to add to instead of taking away. So. All right, y'all. So that's about all I'm gonna do tonight. We'll come back tomorrow night when this piece is good and dry and see if I need to put another coat on or not. Okay, y'all, Saturday, and I am out here. This has dried pretty good now. I don't think I'm gonna need another coat like I had originally maybe thought about. Um, and I'm gonna try to talk loud, y'all, because I got to have the fan on. It's just way too hot out here. So, I've got it whitewashed like I want. Let's see if I turn around. I went ahead and put the drawers back in just to kind of see what it's going to look like. I actually like it. I thought about leaving it just like this. I like the whitewash and then just the original drawers. Um, these are not in. I just kind of stuck them in there for looks. So, but I'm going to take it a little step further. I'm not going to do that. So the thing I'm going to start now is just staining this top. And I want something that's going to be darker. I want something between a gray and a black and I don't really have that. So I'm going to try to mix this so it'll be a dark gray, light black type thing. I'm going to, um, and I'm probably going to get ready to make a mess. So if you don't have the colors you want, don't be afraid to try to mix them. And the worst thing that can happen, I'll have to redo it. And I might have to do that anyway, because this top, even though I sanded it down, it's still, um, I might need a little bit more brighter. It's still got some bad spots on it. And then let me show you what I'm talking about here. I don't know if y'all can see that. Like, see, it's got this dark spot here. The only way I could really take that down is if I made a little indention kind of in the wood and I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna first attempt to stain over this. Let me get these stains out of the way. Sometimes I use my little painter thing as a something to hold my solo cut with. Which should probably be in my best interest to take this because I'm a little messy. So I am gonna tape this real quick. This is just some painter's tape and I wanna tape around. I'm not worried about the back because it's original. I'm probably gonna leave it like it is. 
but I am going to take where I whitewashed at. So let me get on this side first. Let's see, can I go ahead and get this up? I sure hope y'all can hear me. I just can't work without the fan today. It's too hot out here. Before you get ready to stain, just make sure you got all your sand and dirt off of it. And I thought I had done that, but it still feels just a little bit gritty to me. Maybe it's good. All right, I'm gonna put a pretty generous amount on here. I'm gonna start with this dark area because I hope it's gonna cover it up good. See, it's pretty dark. Might be a little darker than what I originally wanted. Get this out of the way. darker than what I wanted. It's almost black instead of gray. I'm going to try not to let this sit too long before I wipe it. Not getting it very even. Kind of got too dark right there, but that's where that bad spot was at too. All right, let's see. Let me get my mess out the way. I got too much stuff going on here. This is a little darker than what I had wanted to do, but we'll see if this is gonna work. It might work all right. And if not, I'll just take the sand and the sander and hit it a little bit with that to lighten it up. Or we'll put a little whitewash on top. But the good thing about it is it did cover up that bad spot. This is going to be a distressed piece. So. I really want it to be inconsistent. I don't want to, I'm not going for a real smooth finished look. white spots right here and I'm not sure if that's where I had some dust here in the shop that flew on that or what so I might have to go and sand that down just a little bit all right I've got this old brush here I'm going to kind of do the edges with Right here, just a little bit. Let me catch that. Great. Perfect. I always keep a rag
it is wanting to drip a little bit down on my drawer, so my drawer. Rolling down my eyes. It's almost like an espresso or coffee bean color, if you will, but the good thing is it's kind of I mean, you see what I'm trying to do is match up the handles a little bit on this. So, I'm gonna do this little strip here. I'll let that dry a few minutes and go back and see if there's anything else I want to do with it. And then I'm gonna get started on these and do something different with them. Okay, y'all, so while that uh, top of that dresser is drying, I am going to paint these tops. So I've been playing musical paints here, trying to figure out what paints I want. So I think I'm gonna do the green for the first one, the yellow, I think that's called kudzu. And the yellow there is called mustard. That's a Savannah mist. And that one is called rusty nail. And so I just took a little bit of painter's tape here and put underneath where the drawer handles were at. So to keep that paint from dripping through. That was my husband's smart tip for me. So. And I'm not gonna paint these all over because I still want some of the original brown to show through. I'm gonna start with this uh, cuts in here. And just do a little wash on it. And I want y'all to know I'm out here painting on Hale's front porch today. So I am trying to talk loud over this fan. Probably got the fan voice going on. See, I really want some of this brown to still show through a little bit. I don't want it to be very even. Make them darker on one corner and opposite on the next floor. I'm going to go back and stress this a little bit more with some sandpaper. Not looking for a smooth finish. Nor a complete coverage. I am still kind of undecided about the top. I may still take that down a little notch in color. Just have to see once I get these drawers on here how that's going to look. Now, I'm going to actually go back and crisscross this a little bit because I want it to look a little messy, a little distressed, a little aged. Give me the aged look. So this piece is already aged. I'm just going with what I got. Gonna give it a look like it's been painted over a few times before. Well, by the time I get finished, it might look like a five year old painted it. I don't know. Alright, that's all I'm gonna do for the green right now. We'll move on to my next color. And yeah, colonial mustard. I'd already shaken these up a little bit, so got that on sweat dripping on it. Woo! Uh oh. See that I just made a boo boo. Wow. 
play back with the crisscross for us from this one. I'm not lying when I say I'm dripping sweat on my paint, I am. I think I'll be a little bit darker on the edges. Now this paint was not new. I have had it for a little while. It's Savannah Mist. So I actually added a little bit of water to it. I think I'm going to have to add some more to it to make it work. But I really want to use this color. And I hope I can without having to get, without having to go buy more paint today. But by now the paint store is probably closed. Good thing about these paints too, you can um, you can actually add the water as you paint for a different texture. Well, not texture, but finish. Get my sweat off of it. All right, let's see. This this one's going to be questionable. Let's see how I can make this one work. It's a little thick. It's a little thick, but I think I can still get some use out of it. It's a beautiful blue gray color. I've actually done a hall tree in my house this, this color here. It's one of my favorites. Yes, I am going against the grain on some of this. And remember, I had my drawers numbered on the back, and that's how I've laid them out. Okay. I really like this rusty nail color. It's pretty. Kind of like a... It's similar to a barn red, but it's got more orange in it.
Okay, so I'm going to let this sit for a little while and then I'm probably going to go back and maybe add where I want to add a little bit or I may even sand in spots too. And But right now I'm just going to let it dry for a few minutes and then I'll go back and play with it. Okay y'all, so got these tops painted and sanded them a little bit. So now I'm gonna go back and add a little bit of um, wax. And this one is brown, Dixie Belle. And no, I am not a distributor or anything like that. But I do use some of their stuff. So I'm gonna be applying this on each top in a little circular motion. And then I'm gonna crisscross it back and forth. And then I'll be going back to buff it with a clean cloth and that'll be it. So. clean cloth in here. Mm -hmm. I hope so because I just got this kind of dark. Just kind of concentrating on the edges, too. Now this paint did dry 24 hours before I did this, and I really need to let this wax set up just a few minutes before I buff it off, but it really depends on how much wax you want on it. I'm just looking for something to seal it in good and to help protect that paint, so. I'm going to go ahead and buff this out a little bit. You can see it changes this color quite much. It kind of tones it down. It looks more now of a mustard yellow instead of such a bright yellow. And it'll take a few days for this to cure and be completely protected. So, I probably got a little too heavy right here on this edge. Let's see, can I buff some of that out some more? Just like with the paint, it's always best to start off light.
Let me see, can I focus down and show you the difference this is making? So you see how these edges look now on this compared to this piece that has not been done. Looks more raw. And it just gives it a good feel too, a good slick feel. Set it to the side. And on to the next one. So just a circular motion and then I'm going to crisscross it back and forth. Concentrate more on the edges where I had distressed it earlier. Sandpapered it. I think this piece would probably look good in a child's room or a living room or beach house, mountain cabin, whatever, with the bright colors. just go back and forth on it. It kind of takes a heavy hand to do this. Normally you would want this wax to kind of sit on about 15 minutes, but I'm going with a little lighter side here. I may go back later and paint inside of these, just the bottom piece of these drawers with the color that's on the top, but kind of undecided just yet. If I want to do that or line it in paper, so let me just do it like this for me. Listen to that rain. Good rain shining. Alright, 
we're finishing up, y'all, putting the drawers and the hardware back in. Okay, y'all, she's all finished. This is a fun project to do. Give me a little side shot here. Thank y'all for watching.